Hello, Squirrel Tribe 2.0. How's everybody doing? Do you see this truck behind us? Behind me, I have um, Charles, the gentleman in the bright blue shirt. There's Charles. There's the man, Kevin. Then next to Charles in the light blue is Zach. He's a realtor friend of ours. And then Diane is climbing into the driver's seat here. Let me tell you what we're doing today. I am walking through a hundred acres of their land, a hundred acres of their land that they are having to put up for sale. Charles is 89 years old, I believe he said, and his, his family, I'm going to try to remember everything because we've been here for over an hour talking to Charles and Diane, walking their property that has, it's a self-sustaining property. It's what people talk about all the time, like homesteaders talk about all the time but they have three ponds, they have their own water source, they grew all kinds of vegetables and fruits, they had um, chickens and turkey and quails and um, ducks, like all kinds of animals through here too, throughout the history of this homestead, what do they call it? Compound, it's the Barnes Compound. So unfortunately, Charles and Diane are getting a little bit older. Which way do I go? Hold on, I lost myself. I think I go this way. The downside to being in a hundred acres is trying to remember, I go this way, trying to remember which way you're going. I wanted to walk and talk to you. So Kevin and Zach are riding back to the house with Charles and Diane and I'm walking back so I can just explain to you guys, y'all, you don't even understand. Like I'm 41, right? And at any point in my life, if I've thought I've had it hard or that I've had to work harder than I wanted to, not at all. You forget, especially since, you know, my Nana passed away about nine years ago. So I don't have those stories from the older generation anymore. I have my mom. She worked her ass off um, for me when, when I was younger. She worked all the time to make sure that we had a roof over our head and everything we wanted, needed, and the ability to take a vacation every once in a while, whatever, right? But before her, when she was younger, even my mom was younger, she had to pluck the chickens and do all these different things. And people my age and younger than me, a lot of us don't understand what that's like because we never had to do it because we've had it good with technology with, um, I wanna say running water, y'all. There was running water here at this, at this place too, but I don't even know how I wanna phrase what I wanna phrase. Let me just show you. This is one of the, one of the ponds that they have. And she was telling me, uh, Diane was telling me that these are stocked. They can go fishing down here and I'm trying not to like step and stuff. The, the amount of ants and stuff that I've accidentally stepped in ant piles. But they would go down here and you can go fishing here and just catch your dinner. You could go swim in here. And she said that the water in here, they used to just go down here and dip their cup in and drink the water. Whereas now you can't do that because you don't know what's in your water. But this place, 100 acres, and it just feels... It feels like stepping back in time, minus when you hear an airplane go overhead. The airplane kind of ruins it because any other time, all you hear are the birds, all you hear is the pine straw under your feet, and then you look up, this is over there, somewhere, there you go, and then you have an airplane that goes over. But do you guys see how friggin' beautiful this is? This pathway that's cleared out, this pond that's over here, they have more ponds. There's but they're trying to sell this because their children, their grandchildren, don't want it because to them it's it might be considered a burden because it's not something that brings money in and a lot of people my age and younger may not possibly understand the bene, beneficial no benef, how beneficial it could be to have land like this where you can sustain your life and take care of your family they have a bunker on here they have an underground bunker that was built during the time where they were worried about the cold war and I mean, the sustainability of this place is absolutely amazing. But what's more amazing are the stories that Charles and Diane were telling us about how they grew up, about um, when Charles was little, having to, you know, they go out, they get up at five and six or five, five, five in the morning or before and go out and get firewood to bring back in in order to have a fire and, and you know, listen to the radio maybe a little bit. Whereas today, these kids wake up and... They're complaining because their TV show isn't on or because you didn't set the DVR or because their iPad's dead or because they have to like put up some clothes or something like, I don't even know where my thoughts are with this, but all I know is that being here, it makes me sad for my generation and those younger than me who, yes, we may have worked hard. We work hard, but in a different sense, but 
we a lot of us didn't have to do the get up at 5 a.m. to go pump water from a well to go catch a chicken to kill it to go um you know pick all your fruits and vegetables that you wanted for the day to hand wash all your clothes to do all these things without the ability of running water with electricity with whatever else you don't realize how previous generations legitimately like built this place until you walk one of these things with an older generation i don't know how to phrase anything i'm thinking of right now all i know is i remember being little and my nana telling me stories about her, her childhood and what she had to do and you know in order to get the day going and literally walk to school and carry all your stuff and kids do that now but it's not the same I don't even know where my brain's going with this y'all I, I wish I could figure out how to put into words kind of what I'm thinking being here so let me show you hold on so this is the main house that they live in and again Charles is 89 and then you've got so you've got Charles and Diane I'm not I don't think Diane said how old she was I'm not sure if I know how old Diane is but this is the house. But at 89 years old, Charles is trying to take care of 100 acres by himself. And it's it's not feasible. That is the downside to that is the downside to having this much land and getting up in age is the ability to take care of it. It, it dwindles. It's not the same as it was. And paying somebody to come do it kind of defeats the purpose of having your own place and being self-sustainable and stuff like that. But y'all, this is the bomb shelter. I, I don't want to call it bomb shelter, hurricane shelter. A lot of people looked at it um, like a like a prepper pantry, however you want to phrase it. To me, it's more of a hurricane shelter. But you've got that, you've got the house, and you have an old chicken coop back over there. But the the way generations think about things differently is a lot of people may not realize it unless they're sitting down talking to a different generation, like. Again, my Nana's gone, so I don't have anybody in that age range to really talk to about what it was like for them growing up, what it's like for them now in today's society with the way things are versus the way they were brought up. Because Charles was saying he, he used to make like in a month 200 something dollars and so he still has that mind frame where he doesn't want to go out and spend all this money because he still has that $200 a month mind frame and it has to go this far and do this and whatever else whereas now we have this whole $200 in a day isn't enough and a lot of us the second money hits our pocket it like burns a hole in it and we have to spend it our mind frames are so incredibly different now than they were for people in the 1800s obviously the 20s the 30s the 40s the 50s the 60s even the 80s and you would think that as a generation or as a as a species we would get smarter as we get older but it doesn't feel like that yeah we have more technology as we get older but it feels like we are being dumbed down as we get older i would not know how to take care of myself on this property as smart as i am i'm a smart woman i know that and as much as i can figure out how to take care of my family where we are, I don't know that I would have the capabilities to do it here. I don't know how to grow things. I don't know how to kill things. I don't know how to get uh, use a well. There's so many things I don't know how to do that if it, if it came down to it, I would be shit out of luck, honestly. And I don't have somebody to teach me these things. So for y'all out there who have parents or grandparents who are in the age range and who have that knowledge of what things were like before technology really truly came in and changed everything i hope you talk to them i hope you learn as much as humanly possible and i hope you take time to really talk to them and learn these things because once they're gone you have books like you have history books you can read and you have whatever else but nothing is the same as getting it from the person from the person who lived it from the person who did it from the person whose hands look the way they do from all of the thing all of the picking they had to do whether it was butter beans charles lost his thumbnails from picking butter beans all the time over time they just they were gone and shelling butter beans picking or shelling one of the two but either way you're not going to get that same sense of life from a book and as much as I love books I am a book nerd all day long you're not going to get that same sense of life from a book that you're going to get from the person so if you have those people who can tell you how this country was built basically how things have been running talk to them learn from them before 
we don't remember what it was like before technology came in and made things so much easier, right? Before it dumbed us down and we didn't have to know how to do things for ourselves because we rely on technology to do it for us. Listen, they're selling this 100 acres. And I truly, truly hope that whoever buys this is somebody who wants to work the land, who wants to grow their own vegetables, who wants to raise their own animals, who wants their children to have an open, safe place to run and play, to practice shooting if you want to, to, to do all these things versus like a company that comes in and builds a subdivision here and it's just your cookie cutter house like everywhere else. I would hate to see that happen here. It's just, it's beautiful. Let me show you, let me just, I mean, can you hear the birds? If I just shut up, <laughs> can you hear the birds? It's just so incredibly pretty. Trees and water and clouds and grass and everything needed to sustain a farm hanging out over here. And it's not even a farm. They're, 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 they're at the age now where they don't grow the same vegetables. They don't have the same animals they take care of, but they've done so much in their lives with the land they have. I mean, it is, it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. So I just want to tell you guys about Charles and Diane because this place today, man, this is, this has been really nice. This is like that, that sense of nostalgia for those of you who ever had a place like this growing up that you could go and run around in or whatever else. Cause it's so hard to find these days. So anyway, I just want to share this with you guys because it made me homesick in a way that I didn't expect to be homesick for. So listen, I love you guys so very much. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you for letting me tell you about Charles and Diane and this hundred acres of just, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. They have a church that comes here for Easter Sundays and, and by the pond, they have their Easter um, service, Easter Sunday service. And that, I mean, even that in itself is absolutely amazing. So that's all. Listen, I love you guys. Y'all have a good day. Bye.